Hello and welcome to part 6 of this Last of Us Remake Grounded Speedrun Tutorial. Mouthful. <laughs> uh, this is going to go through the Dam Chapter, Ranch, Science Lab, University, and Science Lab. So, let's get going. This part's going to be a little boring, but Jackson whatever, we got to go through it. Means we're close to Jackson City, right? Shouldn't be more than a few miles. You ready to see dear old brother? I'm just ready to get there. You nervous? All right, we don't pick anything up from here to the dam. And I think it's fastest to go this way. All right, one thing to mention here. Remember how... Back in the downtown building, after the downtown fight, I talked about... If you try and jump with sprint held down, Joel will jump pretty far. But if you don't have sprint held down, he'll just do a tiny little jump like that. That's going to apply for that area down there. Here as well, but... What happened between Actually, hold on. What do you mean? You and Tommy. When we get over here... Together, so clearly something went down. We just had a bit of a disagreement, that's all. There you go. Oh, go off the ledge like that. But right here, so you want to do that. You can't go from here. You have to be yeah, over here, like there. like so. Yeah, your friend Marlene. Now, there's one thing you don't want to do. I think you I see what I'm getting at. For, a while, but just like time. for most of this game, they do a pretty good job of not killing you from fall damage. You can't take fall damage in this game. Just one fall that's too big. Basically, it's possible to die here if you have sprint held down. I might not be able to get it, but I have seen it happen. Ever want to see your goddamn face again? Jeez. But he's gonna help us. I suppose we're gonna find out. Where I can go to make it happen? With or without his help, we'll get. All right, I'm not gonna get it to happen. I think I still have a clip of it somewhere. Hold on. All right, found the clip I was looking for. It's from P Dub. All right, watch this. Yeah. Point is, there's a chance of that happening. So when you're going off this what ledge here, what do you mean? let go of sprint. You're not together, so He'll do a jump that isn't as far, and you'll live. The reason you don't want to just not do a jump is because he does this slow leaning off the ledge thing, you're like coming. this. Not together, so clearly something went down. We just had a bit of a disagreement. That's it's not as fast because it takes him a while to do that. What happened between you two? What do you mean? You and Tommy. The let go of You're sprint. Together, so clearly something went down. And he doesn't we jump as far. Is basically ah, the point I'm getting at. So what was it about? Tommy saw the world one way. Alright, when you get to right around there, there's a that's checkpoint that sends you down there. <laughs> so really it's just uh notice when the numbers change. Fifty-eight, forty-eight. Nope, a little further, that should be good. There's the change. Checkpoint sends you just a little bit further. And I like to go this way, then mash X to climb up. And we keep going. No, that was not on a permadeath run. <laughs> that clip. He was just practicing. Alright, the dam. Uh, it's pretty funny, you actually don't have to spin your own wheel because of a restart checkpoint. Right there's a hydroelectric power plant. <laughs> I, a hydro who? It, uh, it uses the river's movement and uh, turns it into electricity. You don't have really have time for that shiv door, well, but it is, if you want it, it. it, it's there. All right, when you jump into the water, hold circle while he's in midair and he'll go into the water under, like he'll go underwater right away. Right again, I know I mentioned place the pallet this way, but it, it won't break here, so you can place it sideways. Same thing with over there. Mm. 
Now, as soon as the subtitles pop up, which is when Ellie makes it to the top here. Right there, see that? Go on, give it a spin. That's a checkpoint. Restart checkpoint. And it places you right here with your wheel already s spun around. And then you're waiting for Ellie. Now, if you're a beginner, you can go over here for the shiv door. You don't have time to do this without wasting time, but there's a full explosive, parts, alcohol, and an arrow if you want it. And you, we don't need that. We don't need that. Again, you don't have time to upgrade anything because of the animations of upgrading something. But explosive, alcohol, and an arrow. I think that's it. Yeah. If you think that'll benefit your own playthrough, by all means, this is the time to do it. But if not, just run forward. Check if all of your guns are reloaded. That's important. Reloaded. Reloaded. The only other thing that you have to worry about, we know the shotgun's reloaded, revolver. So go over here. Ignore her high five because it's faster. I know. All right, the only thing of mention, um, make sure I need to mention this ahead of time. Make sure all of your guns are reloaded. Again, I think when we enter the dam, the game assigns the rifle and the pistol to your left and right holster respectively on, on its own. We didn't have that when we left the sniper. We had the... Oh, God, we had the shotgun. We also had the pistol, but no matter what you have in your left and right holster when you're finished with the sniper, the game will automatically assign the rifle and the pistol to your holsters. Um, so you need to make sure everything's reloaded. Now, we had the shotgun before. We pretty much know that's going to be reloaded. Check the rifle while Ellie's doing the thing. We had the pistol out, so we know that's reloaded. We picked up the shorty, and we didn't use it yet, so we know that's reloaded. The only thing you need to check if it's reloaded or not is the revolver. And the reason you need to check that is unlike the original, when you enter the dam here and you're in with Maria, you know, false alarm, they're friendly. From the moment you enter the dam until the moment the fight begin the dam fight begins, you can't check anything in your inventory. You can go into your backpack and craft something, but pulling out a gun checking if it's reloaded, swapping one of your guns, you can't do that once you're inside the dam. Why? Probably for immersion's sake. Like, Joel wouldn't pull a gun out in the dam and, and if it was realistic. Yeah, but there's a big fight coming up and you can't see if things are reloaded or if you want a certain gun for the next part. The original, you could. The remake, you can't. So checking if all of your guns are reloaded, you want to do that here. Now, we do get an El Diablo inside the dam, and luckily, we need the rifle and the El Diablo for this fight. So we kind of, uh, you know, we work with that limitation, and it doesn't affect us here, because for the dam fight, we use the rifle and the El Diablo, and that's pretty much all we use. Um, so yeah, the only thing you want to do here is make sure your revolver is reloaded. That is the one gun... That, uh, you know, you can check that the rifle's reloaded because, I don't know, it's been a while since we, we've used that gun. When you're, maybe there's a checkpoint here. Of course, that's where they, it would place us to make me feel bad. When you're waiting for, when you're waiting for Ellie to spin this, swap to the revolver, and that's where you would do the reload. You have to make sure. You, you have to make sure. Okay. Uh, as for here, there's a climbing speed. Now, look at the difference in climbing here. Slow climb. But if you do it over here, it's a lot faster. So don't... That's a quick climb. Don't climb it over here. You want to do it over here. It doesn't matter if you're pressed against it or not. It has to do with like being left or right. Teamwork. 
So we're over here. Everything's reloaded. Just go up here and then make sure you're left enough for the faster climb. Big difference in climbing speed. I know, I am too. Let's get past this place, then we can scrounge up some food. And like we said, we don't pick anything up and we just go. Yeah, ain't no way around. Gonna have to cut through the... Cutscene skip. False alarm! They're friendlies. We've been dealing with raids. I mean, crouching here doesn't speed them up, I just... It's been quiet for a few days. What the hell are you doing here? I thought I'd find prefer you... Prefer doing that. We're trying to bring the plant back to life. We had it working before. As you can see, look at my... Uh, look, you can't pull anything out. You can't... We'll Check if a gun's reloaded. You can't do anything. No way. You guys have horses. It's the most inconvenient thing, given the fact there's a really difficult fight coming up. It's so annoying. You can check this. Yeah, of course. He likes when you cut his ears. You ever ride one? But you, you can't do this. And it's so annoying. Don't hit any triangle prompts. Don't do anything. You can even be over there if you want. There's really n nothing you have to do here. There. Hey, thanks, Tommy. No sweat. In the original, there was a trick you had to do to get Maria to move quickly. In the remake, uh, she'll move quickly pretty much every time. Yeah. Just don't be standing in her way. Still waiting on at all. And the rest of the boys to relieve me. You know, we'll be fine. Just go home to your family. It's just a couple more hours. I'll tough it out. All right. Well, take it easy. She should start moving right there when she says, when she says that. And then she goes for the door every time right away. I like to do the camera. Remember what we the thing we did at Henry in the toy store? Have the camera backwards when you uh, go through the door. I like to do that here. You want to do that going into like cutscenes. We also do that at the end of the dam. This will be the sixth time of them trying to get the turbines back online. You don't have to crouch walk here. It's been here just a week. It feels like a little faster because the game disables your ability to run. But getting here any quicker doesn't right. speed up the area. I got All right, right here. There's a. Dialogue triangle prompt. It's mandatory, but most of our stuff is long gone. Most of it. Right. The moment you hit triangle, that actually triggered a checkpoint. So restart checkpoint, and that brings you immediately into a cutscene. It's not. This is one of those things. It's a cutscene in the remake. It's not a cutscene in the in the original game. But yeah, hit triangle, restart checkpoint. That's immediately followed up with a cutscene, and it skips out the. Um, you know, it's a little faded, but it looks pretty good. I'm good. It skips all that. So then you skip the cutscene. And, uh, yeah. And then we can keep going. Now, when you get on flat ground here, if you bump into Tommy, I, yeah, you'll actually push him out of the way. So follow him. But uh, I'm going to make a file here. Follow him, but don't, like bump into him. When he gets to the door though, you want to get through it very quickly. I don't know what you heard, but you should see the Because if you slow down at all, Tommy will uh they set up this place with the idea of being self-sustained. We got crops and livestock. He he will he will stop. Um I need to show this off. If you don't go through the door quickly, If you don't go through the door quickly, Tommy will s briefly stop and, like, turn behind him. I'm just going to go through the door kind of late. I don't know what you heard, but you should see, see that? Now. Yeah, you want to avoid that. And the way to avoid that, again, is just to be right behind him when he starts going for the door. And then go to his left, because we're going to take the lower route. And again, don't bump into him. When he gets to the door. I don't know what you heard, but you should see the town. See how he keeps moving? Pretty big deal. Maria and her father, they set up this place with the idea of being self-sustained. We have crops and livestock. Remember how and as long as you keep ahead of him... He'll keep moving. What do you do for protection? Eventually, you get so far away from him, you can like run here, but it it doesn't really speed him up. Maybe 
still got to deal with infected, though, right? There's nothing you need to grab. It doesn't. But it's the world we live in. Or maybe you don't have to be. <laughs> you sound like Marlene. Tommy can sometimes, if you're not fast, Tommy can sometimes say, you, uh, you know, uh, you sound like Marlene, but he can say it, like, all the way back there. So that really is about as fast as you can get him to move here. All right. This is... Uh, what you do inside this building before the fight is not as uh, complicated as the original. In the original, you had to go down the stairs, go back up, craft something, go downstairs a specific way. It's not as complicated here. Um, so you can still only crouch here. These two geniuses it's okay to push him out of the way. But the logic for this area is still kind of the same as the original, where what we're going to do... Here, hold on. You know what? I'll do it first, then I'll mention it. We're, we're not going to upgrade any, any of our guns. That makes it so their dialogue triggers the moment they're done talking. See that? That dialogue from the guy down there, which is... uh, uh that uh that wouldn't trigger in if i didn't pretend to go down the stairs a little bit so you need to do that and then go back that'll make the dialogue trigger in the moment tommy is done talking and then you pick up that's for smoke bombs we don't need it slowly and then you have all the time in the world and really all we're gonna do there's no other way to speed them up beyond just going down the stairs a little bit you get the pipe there's nothing else in here it's a fresh all pipe right. That's good. Tommy's here. We good to go. You get a brick. One second. Okay, good to go. Ready? Go ahead. Hit it. Here we go. And we're just waiting for them. See that Tommy's just above Joel's head right there. We did it, boys. And then he starts moving. Now the one thing you need to do that's the same as the original is they have they have their conversation. You see that? It's pretty impressive. Looks like you're at two million bucks. <laughs> All right, Joel, let's go talk. To avoid that conversation, the moment Tommy talks to Joel, it's like, you see that? That's pretty impressive. If you run away from him, they'll skip the rest of their conversation. And what this does is it prevents Tommy from standing still doing nothing. Nice work, boys. Somebody get on the horn and give Maria the good news. So, <laughs> you see that? run away from him. That's pretty impressive. And Tommy will just keep moving. It skips their dialogue. Like, if, if they were conversing, Tommy would just stop right here until he says, let's go talk, and then go for the door. But it skips all that. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I need to show that again, do I? Why don't we get to the fight? That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, one thing, though. Yeah, and you know, I will show it again. You want to enter this door this way. Because if you enter it this way, there's a brief little thing of Joel closing the door behind him. So here, I'll do all that again. Geniuses are gonna bring this plant back to life. So you can start we we got it this running right around there. All you gotta do to trigger their dialogue when they're done talking is go down the stairs and then go back. You don't have to hit the bottom. You only have to start going down the stairs. If you didn't do that, their dialogue to the left, watch it, wouldn't trigger in. Yeah, that's good. Lower it. Slowly. And nothing you can do beyond this can make them go any faster. Get the fresh pipe, because we're just waiting. We're killing time. All right. That's good. Tommy's here. We good to go? Give me one. Get the brick there, just because okay, we need go. it, and Ready? it's go ahead. Hit it. in our way. And it's a non-factor for this fight. God damn. We did it, boys. Nice work, boys. Somebody get on the horn and give Maria the good news. So I think if I was standing really far away, their conversation wouldn't start up. So you want to be close to them here. You see when that? they start conversing, run away. It's pretty impressive. When the dialogue doesn't trigger in, then you can go back. Now, this is what I was talking about. When you go through this door, go through it with the camera facing this way. And as you saw, the cutscene starts a lot earlier. A lot earlier. 
Okay, damn fight. This is not a pretty fight. I gotta be honest with you. I'll try and do it perfectly first try, and then uh, uh, I'll go over it step by step. Now remember, we picked up the El Diablo, and that forced it into our right holster. Okay? But yeah, the beginning of this fight is just a crapshoot. I, 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 I hate to say that, but it is. Let me just do it. Shit! Found it! Stop him! Don't let him into the building! You gotta rely on luck. You guys see anything? Let's get to the bridge! Yeah, that's a thing. That's all, those sons of bitches. Everything's reloaded. We gotta get to the girls. Right behind you. Right there. Joe, do your thing. Damn it. That's bad luck. Yeah, you just wait for him to show up there. And then you get all the stuff here, make sure everything's reloaded. That was too damn close. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, This fight right here is the worst part of it. As you saw. Now there is a strategy in place to make that, what just happened there, unlikely. First of all, I think I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before. If you have the camera off of them, their aim and reaction time are worse. Their senses are worse when the camera is off of them. Now, as for the climbing up, it's actually pretty specific. If you climb up those crates, or if you even climb up straight here, you can get hit by that guy. But if you climb up this way, camera down, and you climb up like to the right there, it's extremely unlikely you'll get hit. Now, as for that, yeah, that's just... Anything? I have no clue where the shotgun guy is. Here's just the randomness that can happen. You still make it work, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is not going to work for you every time. If you get shot by the pistol guy and he gets staggered, you have to point the camera up to see if the rifle guy is going to lean out from behind cover and shoot you. Because if you combine those two bullets, it's it's a death for you. Um, but if you never get shot or you get shot by the rifle guy, just keep going. The only time you want to point the camera up when you're le going through that first part is if the pistol guy shoots you and staggers you. So all together, you climb it like this, and you climb up to the right there as well. Keep the camera off of them, and we just have to see. See, if he aims to the side, he's going to hit you every time. All you can do is swing, and then try and make it out of here. You're gonna pay for that. And then you... Uh, I have no clue where he is. You guys yeah, uh, it's... When you make your way outside... Here, I'll just go over some stuff here. Let's get to the bridge. When you... Tommy, make your way out here... You, you want to kill the shotgun Maria, guy, which will come out this way. Here. Ellie, hide. Maria. And when you go here... You want to crouch right here because after you kill the shotgun guy, the guy with the revolver is going to be right here as well. 
Now, you don't kill them right away because you need to be near the dam. So what you do is you sprint... Move, move out of my way, please. You are literally in the spot I need. You want to go, like, here? Why is it in games that they... Look, there's one, two, three, maybe four other people. As far as they're concerned, I'm the only live being on the dam. I hate that in games so much. Sorry, I figured I'd mention that. Basically, what I'm saying is after you kill this guy, if you just sprint here, there's a chance you can get shot by the guy with the revolver here. So, to avoid that, crouch at the window and then start up again. That's what I was trying to show off there. Oop, checkpoint. Okay, we gotta go back here. And yeah, if you get anything besides all of that, there's there's, there's a pretty random area, as you probably guessed. Camera down. All right, I gotta check. I should I should be good. All right, kill him. Ow. What the? I don't think I finished reloading. All right, whatever. Um, yeah, that part, what happened there was the guy with the pipe followed me through the window that I leaped over instead of being like further in the room. It's just random. Here, I'll, I'll try and get a perfect performance here. Climb up there, climb up there, make sure it's to the right. Oh, I'm probably gonna get hit, yeah. Yeah, that was extremely unlucky. What happened there was the guy with the rifle didn't fire at me as I was climbing and instead went to the right and shot me there. Um, yeah, if you don't hear him... I don't know what you do there. If you don't hear him shoot at you, that's going to happen 100% of the time, which is pretty much a death. So if that happens, what you do... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. What you do is you would go here and then try and brick him. He would be standing there, so you'd brick him, pick up this one, and then uh, continue onward. I don't know where the other enemy is. Thanks, Tommy. Real helpful. Do I have to use a brick here? Um, I think I can use it. There we go, yeah, use a brick there. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked here. Still haven't seen a perfect performance here. All right, so he shot, so I can keep going. Ow, shouldn't matter. Kill him, crouch, then stand up, get around here. Throw the brick at him, kill him, and then go. That right there was perfect. That's what you want. You go to around right here, brick the guy with the pipe, shoot the guy with the gun. Because what ends up happening is, you notice he didn't shoot me. That's because I think the game thought this guy was in front of him. No, we're trapped. So he didn't... Um, uh, what is it? He didn't. Uh, he didn't shoot because he thought his buddy was in was uh, was in his way. So, yeah, I've I've seen some other runners like use the gun first and then the the brick. I recommend using the brick first on the guy with the pipe, or whoever's first, and then shooting the the uh, the second guy. Now the reason we go all the way over here instead of just staying right around here, is it kind of just draws them out a little more. It kind of just draws them out a little bit more. All right, so that was a perfect performance. That's what you want out of that area. Now let's talk about what you do on the dam. This is extremely important because it could ruin your entire run. All right, he shot so we can keep going. Also, sometimes the guy with the shotgun is just here when you leap over this window. That's random, all right? There's nothing you did wrong. It's just random. But get him. 
crouch here so you don't get shot, and then go. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to go on the bridge here. See how he's not shooting me? Okay. You guys see anything? Let's get to the bridge. All right, now watch this. This should happen. All right, I'm going to crouch here and watch this. Yeah. To this day, I don't know if that's a glitch or a trick prevention. I have no idea. But the reason that happened is because I was on the dam when Tommy started talking. So I kill the last enemy where I am right now. And then Tommy says, you guys see any of them? If you're on the dam when he says those lines, that little glitch will happen where you get shot from behind cover by an enemy that's behind a wall. <laughs> I'm actually going to... Hold on. I want to I wanna show it on very light mode. Just give me a second here. All right, so I'm on... I'm I'm I switched to encounter select and I'm on very light. Now watch this. I'm on the dam. You guys see anything? And we're going to do the same thing. Well, I messed it up, but look at this. Did you see me get shot from behind cover over and over and over and over again? I could have shown that off a little bit better. Hold on. You guys see anything? Anyway. Let's get to the bridge. Watch this. Uh, let me uh, turn off my controller cam for a second. And just watch. No, watch this. So, yes. I don't know if that's, uh, a glitch or a like a way to prevent something else from happening but it's caused by being on the dam when Tommy says you guys see any of them or see, or see any more of them whatever he says so that's why after you've killed the last enemy in that building or outside the building wait until Tommy starts talking before you get on the dam and that prevents it and then the strat should work what happens is like an extra enemy is spawned in and yeah, it causes bad things to happen. <laughs> so again, sprint right away, climb at this specific angle, camera pointed down. He didn't shoot me, so I gotta... See, that's where he, he is. And that's the backup. Yeah, you only need to do that if he doesn't shoot at you, but the rest should be the same. Kill him, crouch here so he doesn't shoot you, bait them over here. So there's one. Oh god. That was so dumb. Technically I can still perform it the rest of the way. You guys see anything? Alright, he's talking, so we're good. Get the bottle. Molotov. And we're good. And before the checkpoint is hit, swap to your pistol. Because that's the first gun we need for the ranch fight, and all we use in the next building is a rifle. And then when the door hit shuts, you're okay, and you just want to pause buffer for when the checkpoint is hit, which is right there. And then I'll show you. It doesn't really matter how much damage you take. You can do this part normally. So you're not alerted by these enemy... Uh, I'll, I want to go over... Uh, like the first two parts a couple more times, but basically with this area here, you're not alerted by the enemies until you make it down the stairs. And even then, as long as you keep moving, they won't hit you. And then you right just... 
So you have time to pick that stuff up, as you can tell right there. They don't care about you. And then with without any health, you can still do this area. As you can see, I'll explain that strategy a bit more because it's very specific, but yeah, let's just do a couple more of these. Basically, I just wanted to show, even if you have no health at all, you can still do that area, no problem. What Q do you use the Molotov? Yes, I didn't mention that. What is the Q? Uh, well, it's mainly Maria when she's finished talking. Bandits, they're breaking into the building. After she's done talking, that's when I throw it. Because you don't want to delay the throw too long. You want the throw to be kind of early. And as long as you throw it in the doorway, all the enemies will die. If the door doesn't close right away, it means not all of them died, but then the remaining enemy will try and go through the doorway, step on the fire, and then combust. So uh, he will die eventually. I've never had it where an enemy lives through that when you do it properly. But yeah, it's pretty much when Maria is done talking is when I throw it. Shit, all right, camera down, climb at this weird angle. He shot at me so I can keep going. Oh god. Nope, we're good. That was a judgment call. Get him, I'm getting chased. And go. See that delay until he gets on there. You kind of see what you have to do for that first part, right? It's, it's rough. I did mention I heard him. What I meant was when I El Diablo'd the guy with the shotgun, the guy with the pipe was really close to me. He climbed out the window that I climbed out of as well. So then I just kept going because otherwise he'll hit you a couple times and you don't want that. Tommy, yeah. Bandits, See that? He'll step into the fire and then you're good. All right, I'll do all of this one more time just to see if there's any weird thing that happens. But yeah, this part right here is a crapshoot. All right, it's not always going to play around, play out this way. All right, I didn't hear him shoot, so get the brick. Go. Again, that that's something you need to be aware of. If you don't hear him fire, you're you're gonna die. Okay, if you just try and run through. So keep an ear out for that. And that's the backup that you have to do. As for this guy. Boom. To avoid getting shot, just do that. Bait them over this way. Boom. Boom. Whichever one's first. Now, don't hold down triangle. You're perfectly fine with the pipe you have. But you, if you hold down triangle, there's an axe there. You might accidentally pick up that. Don't. You don't want that. You want the pipe. And you only use, what, one hit here out of nine that you have. So it'll last you the rest of the way that you need. But tap triangle in case they drop ammo for something. Because it's not going to hurt you. So that, that's what happened there. You guys see wait before thing? going on. Wait before, until Tommy talks to before going on to the dam. Breaking into the building. Throw. We're good. Swap to the pistol. Like I said, I've never had it where they one guy lives through a throw as long as you throw it in the door. Sometimes it may just happen later than earlier. And we go. That's all, those sons of bitches. We got an extra pistol bullet, so we'll use that. We gotta get to the girl. Now for this area. Right um, yeah. Pick up anything they drop. Do your thing. And then for this strategy, how do I explain this one? All right, that was a good performance. Now, luckily, we can do this from a restart encounter whenever we want. You don't need that crafting ingredient. What's funny is what happens is the door actually push. It, it's there, but the door pushes it into the corner, so you can't really ever pick it up unless you want to do this and then go around the open door and then get it. Basically, when you enter this doorway, you want to pick up all the ammo that's here, and then go for the, and then go for the door. I love how they're just sneaking around. Look at this. That's the dumb thing about this area that I was mentioning. On the dam and uh, inside this room, 
they are pretty much, or you are pretty much the only thing that they will notice. I'm trying to see if, if that'll happen again. That was kind of funny. You look. It's so dumb. Like, technically these guys should be aggressive, but they're not. Did you see that over there? Where? I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a tutorial, but I'm just kind of fucking around here. <laughs> yeah, nothing makes sense here. Okay. So, pick up any ammo they drop. See, when you get right here, they won't hurt you. Now, if you wait here for too long, eventually they will. See, eventually they will. Now, what's interesting is when you go into the next room, they will die behind you. Listen. See that? So, when you go into this next room, they will die behind you. That also applies for the room to the left. Listen for their deaths. Just listen. But that also coincides with those enemies knowing where you are. So the strategy here is... You want to kill this enemy while you're still in this room. Now, you only have a certain amount of time to do that because otherwise you're going to get shot in your back. Like so. But the moment you enter the room, that's when they die behind you and this guy with the shotgun who's hiding behind that little thing right there will peek. So with all that knowledge in mind, the strategy is... Kill, go in, bottle, swing, bottle right here just wait boom boom it's a lot it's faster if they don't end up hitting him but that's just random it's a strategy you can do with almost no health at all now the one thing you can mess up is if you go too far in the doorway hear how they died behind you and they and now they know that you're there it's because you Base, as far as the game's concerned, you went into the next room. So you want to get this shot while the game thinks you're still in this room. And you do it by the... Now, this guy has armor. So the way to kill him in one hit is to hit his legs or his arms. Personally, I like shooting his arms. Do your thing. Then you want to crouch because this guy has a shotgun as well. And then boom. And then afterwards you get the bottle, the rifle, any ammo they drop, and an El Diablo bullet right there. And a pistol bullet that's also over there. And you use the remainder of the downtime to pick all that up and make sure the left and right holster guns are reloaded. You don't have time to swap, which is why I mentioned you wanted to swap to your pistol when you were in the middle of the, uh, the damn fight. So I'll do all that one more time, and then I'll put everything together. And again, it's perfectly fine if you only have one pistol bullet here. But boom. Boom. Crouch. There's a bottle right there. God damn it. If that happens, I don't know what's going to happen. Let me just see. Yeah, that. That would, that would be the worst thing. Again, them shooting him is, like, kind of ruining this a little bit. Don't try and, like throw it at him too early. This is not a strategy you want to try and save as much time as you possibly can. Crouch. That's why you want to crouch right away. Sometimes that can just happen. And then reload everything and pick everything up. That was too damn close. And that's that. Practice, 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 practice is really all the the only other thing I can I can say. 
So let's do all of this from the beginning. Camera off them, climb at this weird angle. He shot at me so I can keep going. Oh! Yep, that's just the randomness of the area. Nothing I did wrong, nothing you can do to prevent that. It can just happen. Shit! All right, he shot at me. Keep going. Ow. Boom. Crouch here. Go again. Bait them. You guys see anything? We're good. Yeah, brick whoever's first, not a specific person. Oh, I lost my sprint. That should be good. Swap to the pistol. Because we need it for ranch. Uh, when checkpoint and encounter go away, checkpoint's been hit. That's all, those sons of bitches. We gotta get to the girls. Right behind Pick you. up whatever is dropped. Joe, oh, I want that. Do your thing. <laughs> Over here. You have time to do all that. And then... Boom. Crouch real quick. Don't throw it too early. Boom. Boom. Get all the stuff you need. God, there's a lot of ammo. I have a lot of pistol ammo. Alright, I'll continue off of that. And that's that. Alright, now. The moment you can pause again after the cutscene skip... Again, make sure everything's reloaded. I can't stress that enough. Especially the rifle. Make sure the rifle is reloaded, okay? The, the earliest you can pause. Restart checkpoint, and that's going to skip the... I just saw them riding on out of here, and you can just go. All right, come on. Now, the horse riding in this game works exactly like Part 2. And the way it works in Part 2 is when you hold Sprint and Forward, that's how you get the horse's max speed. And only like a slight, slight turn of the right stick is what makes him uh, maintain that speed. Again, if, you, if you're just riding the horse like this, you're never going to maintain his full speed. Like if you're just... The horse is just never going to speed up for you. If you're just... What you want is sprint forward and adjust the right stick. And you'll see, Joel will eventually get some speed out of the horse. Same thing with right here. Sprint forward and only very slightly adjust the right stick. She couldn't have gotten far. We'll find now when it gets to tight corridors like this, you can get away. You, you don't have to be perfect. Also because Tommy's the one going in front. You can't, you can't pass him, so. You don't have to worry so much about your speed, but when you get to open areas like this, sprint forward and only adjust the right stick. And you can gain a little bit of momentum here, but you gotta turn the stick quite a bit. But see, that's pretty much how you get it. All right, now, this hill is important. I just let go of sprint, so I just ruined the momentum, but when you're going down this big incline right here, if you don't have maximum speed, you go down it so, so slowly. Hold on, I'll overwrite this file. You go down it so slowly. Here, I'll show you. There, more tracks. The logic is dumb too. It's like, come on, we gotta get to Ellie. Pretty game is pretty. Let's look at the graphics. Um, if you have maximum horse riding speed when you approach that hill, you'll have it when you're going down that hill. Far. We'll find it. Don't worry. Stubborn kid. So if you're gonna maintain it in one so spot, have it be that one spot. Like this. Okay. What's going on? And again, you don't have to get it here. Just try your best. Even I don't. The corridors are too tight. I like to pre-align it right here. So try and get the max speed right here, and you'll see the difference. There. More tracks. See how fast he's going? 
versus this speed right here. Now, the one thing you have to keep a lookout for is when you'll notice this when you play it. When you have that full speed going down the hill, the right stick sensitivity goes up a lot. Like you'll just move this a tiny bit and Joel will just turn that way. So if you need to adjust the direction he's going in, all oh, the tiniest, tiniest little movement will do. Okay. We'll find it. Don't worry. That right there specifically is the difference between getting a gold and losing like four or five stuff. seconds. Nothing like this. What's going on? Yeah, in the original, you had to like let go of sprint and hold hold it back down. Ellie, what are you thinking? So I like to use this time right here to align the sprint speed, and then there, more tracks. A very tiny bit, and there you go. That was perfect. That's what you're looking for. All right, eventually the horse speeds up a little bit at the bottom here. And you just turn and go. Alright, for the sake of this area being just the tiniest bit easier, uh, we use a checkpoint. So, after Tommy says C, just do a pause buffer and... There, the encounter has begun. And restart checkpoint. Now this fight right here is the reason we've been hoarding all this pistol and revolver ammo. And even, remember, there was a trick in Financial District I told you about where if you got one of your three arrows back, you, you could use an arrow in Financial District in place of a rifle bullet so you can use it here. This is, the, this is the spot where we can use it to save you a revolver bullet. So I'll go over like different strategies you can do based on how much ammo you have. There's like three different things you can do to uh, just to make this area doable. This area is rough. There's no way around it. It's random. It's brutal. You got to get shots from far away where the last two enemies can be is random. There's a lot going on here. And I'm sure there's something faster here that's still to be discovered, but yeah, it's it's pretty rough. I'll try and do it perfectly first try the like the way I know how to do it. So here we go. Again, you only need two pistol bullets here. That's it with the pistol. And that's the fight. Now that's with a normal amount of ammo. Um... Two, was it two rifle bullets, three revolver bullets, two pistol bullets? That's a normal fight. I'll just do it. Oh, I hit the checkpoint. All right, that's why I made a file. <laughs> Again, you only need two pistol bullets. One, two. And then. Oh, I met. Really? Don't miss that shot. Come on. So Tommy will always hit this one. One. Headshot him. Get him. Get him. I'll explain more about that guy. Reload the rifle. Get him. And then... One. Two. That is a perfect fight right there. There is a strategy where you can do this with if you have more than two pistol bullets. But even me trying to be really fast, I don't know if I recommend that. All right, that's one bad thing that can happen. That enemy with the rifle in the back, he has armor. And I think the way it registers as a kill is because you hit his arms. But sometimes you can hit his armor or his helmet. All you can do is just aim in the same spot every time and hope it counts as a kill. I wouldn't even worry, but again, there's a strategy where you can do this if you have like three pistol bullets. Because what it does is it makes this kill a little bit faster. There's a kill. 
but I've noticed some randomness with all this. It makes that guy be in a different spot, and as you saw, those enemies were in a slightly different spot as well. It might be worth doing, though. It's probably around three or four seconds faster, but that's only a strategy that's possible if you have more than two pistol bullets. And if you had more than two pistol bullets, something that I kind of like to do is this. I kind of like taking a chance on getting a headshot. <laughs> Just taking a chance. There's the kill. And if you don't have a revolt, oh god! All right, I, I might die here. Nope, he had no clue I was there. Yeah, if you don't have revolver ammo, that's the strategy. Wait for him to go up and hide, and then climb up, and then swing at him three times. All right, what else should I mention about this? What pistol bullet strat you decide to do? You could you could do that, and then. that and then do the rest or you can do this Cover me. I'm up. Ah! Ah! Hey, that. that's the one I recommend for simplicity or again you can do this Yeah, that one I don't recommend. Again, th th I'm making that look easy. That's not easy. That's not something you can rely on realistically. Um, but yeah, what you decide to do with the pistol is up to you. My biggest recommendation is doing this. And then swapping. Now, the the guy with the Molotov up there, he can be in two different spots. One right there or up there. This shot's a little bit easy, uh, harder to hit than that one, so I like to aim off to the side, and then I adjust from there. So, yeah. But again, what you decide to do with the pistol, that's up to you. I personally, if I have enough ammo, prefer to do this. And then this shot right here. If that guy aims at you right away, he will miss the shot. If you're aiming at him and he's taking a while to show up, he will hit that shot. So I'm probably jinxing it, but he should miss this. Yeah, exactly. But after he fires, he usually ducks back down. So, and as for where to hit him, I like to aim a little bit to his left, just above where the cover is. If you aim higher, you're gonna hit his helmet. If you aim any lower, you're gonna hit the cover. If you aim in the middle, there's a chance he hit his armor. I try to aim for his, for his arms. Cover me. I'm up. Ah! Tommy will almost always shoot him. Come on. All right, ignore that. You're never gonna get that. He aimed at me like right away. Watch my back. Ah! Oh, you're gonna pay for that. Like I said, this is a, this is a rough area. Also, it's just personal preference. I like to be over here just so I can uh, line myself up with the my first rifle shot a bit easier. And this is a lot of uh, downtime. So if you didn't have a chance to reload your pistol, you have more than enough time right here. Cover me. I'm moving up. Ah! Yeah. Oh, you're gonna pay for that asshole. See that I like to pre-align to the right and then adjust if he's not there. Boom. So then, yeah, kill him. If you miss, I just recommend doing it over. I like to shoulder swap for that kill, and then if you have three revolver bullets, kill him and then kill the other guy. If you're out of revolver ammo, what you do, you hold back. When he gets there, oh god, sprint forward and climb. And he loses lose sight of you, and you do that. Um, 
Yeah, that strategy is uh, a bit iffy. But when you're out of ammo, there's nothing you can do. So let's say you only had... That's the strategy if you have two re revolver bullets. Again, if you have three, you kill that guy. But where does that extra rifle bullet come in? Let me show you. Let's say you only have, like, one revolver What's bullet. What the hell do you do then? Well, hopefully, one of your arrows took. So we can do this. Again, this is all hy uh, hypothetical. All right, he aimed at me right away. I missed. If that happens, just do the area over again. I'm telling you. All right, let's say this is the only revolver bullet you have. All right, I'm getting shot by that guy over there. Anyway. Reload. Even though, like, it looks like he could see me, he, he can't. Don't worry, you're fine. Now, those enemies were, like, flip-flopped, but that's okay. Just do the strat as it should be done. But you saw right there, after I fire the rifle bullet the second time, I reload the last one that I wouldn't normally have, and then I use it on this guy. It's a way to save a revolver bullet, and we don't really use arrows past this point. The last arrow we used was in Searchlight. The first enemy we killed in the Searchlight fight. So arrows, we end up picking up an arrow later on, but it's pretty much useless. Well, no, it's not. We end up using it. It's right before Tunnel, the one we pick up there. But yeah, again, I, I mentioned in Financial, if you, you fired three arrows between Billstown and the hotel, two in the doggy door part and then one in the hotel. If, if you get one of them back, I recommend using an arrow on that one enemy in financial district instead of a rifle bullet so you can use it here. So you don't need to have three revolver bullets heading into here because you saw I had a pretty good attempt and uh, I had to rely on drops. So I had three. That's one of those things. Again... If you want to do this strategy. You're gonna pay. Doesn't matter. Again, I like to aim for his left side. Oh god. Nope, he has no clue I'm here. Now, he will know you're there if you sprint up to him too early. This is why this area is so weird. Not, not only will some strategies just not work, headshots are tough, the rifle sometimes will hit his armor, that guy that we kill with the second rifle bullet is sometimes shooting at you when you go to run up to him, and then these guys can sometimes be flip-flopped or just not be there at all. This area is one of the worst in, in the entire run, and I think I've still yet to do it perfectly. But the thing that's complicated is you can do a lot of different things based on how much ammo you have approaching here. Again, there's the what you do with the pistol, how much revolver ammo you have, whether or not you had an arrow break and you used an arrow in financial, so you have an extra rifle here, how much revolver ammo you have. If you don't have enough revolver ammo, you have to climb that thing and pipe the guy to death, or obviously shooting him is, is faster. Again, this is my preferred strategy if I have enough ammo. Boom, boom, swap. Boom. He aimed at me right away, so I knew he would miss. That right there is my preference of, like, the route. But if you don't have two pistol bullets, two rifle bullets, and three revolver bullets, you can't do that. And there's so many different scenarios you can play around with. Watch my back. Let's say I only have two revolver bullets. This is hypothetic hypothetical. I missed, of course I did. Yeah! <laughs> 
Such a funny strat. But you saw right there, if I had hit the rifle shot, I would have revolvered the other guy. The reason that strat is sketchy is because it takes a while for the rifle to be reloaded. That's the sketchy part. But yeah. We don't use any rifle ammo past this point. We also don't use any pistol ammo past this point. All we use are shotgun and shorty and revolver in winter. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, so we don't use pistol. We don't use rifle. And yeah. So I'll do the strat I know how to do. Or I'll try the rifle strat again. Right, so if I don't, I ha he aimed at me er uh, late, so I had to kill him right away before he fired. Damn it. If you have enough ammo, just do this. If if you want, again, that's why that rifle strat is a bit weird. But uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to mention. Game? What was that? <laughs> That's why this area is dumb. I have full health here. Watch my back. Oh, what a difference, huh? Again, you've already seen there's something faster than this, but this area is rough. I prefer to go with what I know works. Yeah, you can still get it to work, but the rifle shot is pretty rough. I also recommend don't using, not using a bottle here. You can, just I recommend not doing that. We use it in the next fight. That was a perfect headshot. That's something else that can happen here. All right, I think I'm done with this area, explaining it. It's rough. Practice, practice, practice. I've shown just about everything that can happen. All right, he aimed at us late, so I need to kill him right away. All right, I I want that to work, please. You know, whatever. I I have enough ammo. If you have enough revolver ammo, use the revolver ammo because the reloading of the rifle just kind of really sucks. That's ideal. That's why I kept mentioning, all right, you want... Uh, revolver conservation is very important. And it's mainly because of this strategy. You've seen how much cleaner it is when we have revolver ammo to use here instead of that rifle bullet. However, that rifle bullet, you know, if you can find a way to make it work, that's great. You know, it's just one of those things. Hold on. Let me just, what if I don't sprint? Watch my back. Probably because I sprint up to them while I'm still reloading is the problem. Oh, there you go. Just don't sprint right after you, uh, right after you fire. That's how you can effectively use that. All right. And uh, when the checkpoint is hit, you want to do a, you want to do a restart checkpoint. I just want to show you we don't need any revolver ammo past this. And uh, yeah, you want to stand right there. Because this is something you'll love. Watch this. Come on. Back to the horses. If you stand right here, you'll block your own horse from also coming this way. 
That's all of them. Come on. Back to the horses. Also, I'm pretty sure if you just stand right here, the horse never moves forward. Yeah, but what ends up happening is you can't get on your own horse. Look at it trying to move. Hold on, what was that? This horse wants so desperately to move, but I'm in its way. You can't get on your own horse until Tommy's gotten on his. So basically, you just, uh... That's all Again, I'm just gonna waste this bullet because we don't need it. Back to the horses. Basically, what I like to do is stand right on the edge here, swap to your El Diablo and shotgun. So the horse moves as early as it can, and then your ho your horse follows right behind him. So yeah, it's okay if you have no pistol, no revolver, and no rifle ammo. It's perfectly okay. All right, as soon as the subtitles pop up, right there, tracks keep going this way, restart checkpoint. That no places you quite a ways away further. So they didn't get to it. That checkpoint wasn't there in the original. Now this checkpoint is in the original, but it's a lot earlier. So when you get just past this tree, right there, again, you can use the checkpoint time to know when, where the exact spot is. Restart checkpoint, and it places you all the way up here. This checkpoint was in the original, but it happened a lot later. So yeah, and again, hold Look, sprint and forward, only adjust the camera to get the horse to move horse. quickly. She's gotta be there. Cause you wanna go ahead of Tommy here. And then pretty. mash triangle approaching this one. You won't get off the horse. And make sure your shotgun and El Diablo are reloaded. That's the one thing when you stick to that spot when you're waiting for the horses, swap to your El Diablo and shotgun and then reload one of them. You can reload the other Be one careful. here. All right, that's Ellie. reloaded, so we're gonna reload this one. Okay, Ellie. if I had to guess, I'd say we got an El Diablo bullet dropped somewhere in the dam. I think we did, yes we did. Yeah, normally you only have one here, which is what you need. I'll even show you. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know we have why we have. Well, we got a drop. You don't need to rely on it. And shotgun ammo again. I like to have one or two. Actually, yeah, you want at least one shotgun shell. Otherwise, you have to do a weird strategy in university. But before we go into the room, what you need is is these to be reloaded, and go in here and get a thing of blades. There's binding there, we don't need it, but you need the blades. That gives us a nail bomb we can craft, which we will use a little bit later. Okay, this fight's kind of fun. When it works, being the key word. This is why you want the bottle here. And that's that. All right. So first things first. You aim, move forward, kill him, get the bottle, throw it, swing, go downstairs, get on this step. You are invisible because they threw a smoke bomb. So I'll show you. You can just stay there. They won't hit you. Yeah, one of those guys didn't think this through. It's like, I know, we'll smoke him. Yeah, we got him. I can't see shit. <laughs> Basically, what I'm getting at is you have time to align your throw and do what you need to do. And where you should be standing, don't stand on the flat part. Stand, like, on the top of the last thing of stairs. So... El Diablo him. The reason I don't kill him with just a pipe is because sometimes these guys... Well, that's actually the reason right there. That's the reason right there. If you pipe this guy, 
Sometimes you can step on the stairs, which triggers the guys on the bottom, and they can behave strangely. So the guy up top needs to be taken out swiftly, which is the reason I don't recommend using a bottle in the forest part of the fight. Again, we got a bottle leaving the dam in the dam fight after the enemies were killed, but using it on the dam, first of all, there w wasn't really a spot where we could use it, and two, even if there was, piping him twice, it just it messes with the enemies on the bottom. I don't even know the reason why. I think it's because maybe they spawned in early or something, but that's why I use a bottle on this guy. Now, realistically, you could also use a shotgun. And again, you have time to line it up. So you could also do that, but then you just have a bottle. Normally, I'll be totally honest, you won't typically have like two or more shotgun. Most of the time, you'll just have one, being honest. And you need one for university. You don't absolutely need it, but you, you really want it. You gotta trust me on that. So again, I go for the bottle. And as long as you do all that, notice I'm throwing it in the same spot. The guy with the armor will run that way, and these guys should still be close enough. We picked up a training manual at Henry's, which was uh, expanded Molotov radius. We use it in the bar. We use it here. We use it in the, the damn doorway. We use it in a lot of places, so it's worth it. Now, one thing that's optional. When we kill the second guy, he drops a machete. It is up to you whether you want to have that going into the university and onward or not. It is personal preference. You kind of want a melee weapon. Technically, you don't even need one. It, it's up to you. I guess thinking out loud, I would want the machete. It has more to do with like the, the six runners guarding the generator. We use a shotgun and two shorty shells on them and then take out the remaining ones with uh, whatever melee weapon we have. Machete is just a little bit more guaranteed that it's not going to go horribly wrong. So after you get the kill, hold down triangle. You can't tap triangle because he already has a melee weapon. You'd have to hold it down. Now, if he drops uh, a bullet, the game will prioritize that one instead. So... I guess it doesn't hurt to try. Again, it's up to personal preference which you prefer, a pipe or a machete. So I'll show you what that looks like. And the other thing you don't want to do, you don't want to crouch for the machete. So it's one of those things, you pick it up right away and Joel won't crouch for it. Otherwise... You can get it to work, but you saw that first enemy. You were already on the stairs. Those enemies spawn in when you've taken your first step on those stairs. So, yeah, if you're going to pick it up, hold down triangle as soon as the pipe hits the guy's head. Like so, he keeps moving. There's the throw. And then... Yeah, what do we do after that? Um, okay. I made a file here, so it's okay. Yeah, I'd go with the machete, honestly. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> Only hit down once. Swap to the shorty, and then craft the nail bomb. And as you saw, there is no wasted time. That triangle prompt d didn't show up because uh, Joel took forever to get in front of the door. That had to do with how long it took for the game to recognize the enemies as officially dead. You've heard me mention that a few times. So yeah, the two things you got to do when the fight is over. Swap to the shorty. Craft the nail bomb. Okay. You could also craft the nail bomb if you want in the university bloater section. 
because there's a little bit of time there where you're doing nothing. But I, I'd, I'd rather focus all my energy on that area going perfectly than doing that because it cuts it kind of close, and it's something that you you don't have to think about. So, yeah, and again, you have time to do that. So, but it's something you got to remember when the Molotov hits the ground, shorty, nail bomb. And I'm gonna go with the machete leaving here. And again, you're wasting almost no time at all. Okay. Um, skip cutscene. Now, this one's weird. It's not as soon as you are able to pause. It's like three quarters of a second after you're able to pause. Like so. And then you're good right there. If you... Normally, after you skip the cutscene, it goes to the part where Joel's teaching Ellie about football. And there's a long wait before you can control them. If you restart checkpoint as early as you can, it puts you there. But from the moment you're able to pause, if you wait like three quarters of a second after that, that gets you this checkpoint right here. So, yeah. And uh, the horse riding is the same. You want to try and keep the left stick straight and only adjust the right stick. I, ch I try to get full momentum right around here. Okay. One of these buildings look like a mirror. Well, we'll head to central grounds. Should be able to see most of the campus from there. Now, I prefer to go over this barrier here because it's just a lot easier. The one on the left it has some weird collision. Ooh, it's getting chilly. There's that time of year. Now, the horse rides very slowly here, so what I do is I get off when I go through that doorway right here. Now, just like in part two, whichever way the camera is facing, Joel will get off on the opposite side. So I point the camera this way, mash triangle, and he'll get off that way. Also, if you have sprint held down, he gets off the horse very awkwardly. So when you're trying to get him off the horse, let go of sprint and mash triangle. It takes quite a crew to run that operation. And he's actually going faster on foot than if uh, Not sure. we were riding the horse. So, and he only starts to slow down when you get indoors. So get through that, get through that little hallway there. Point the camera to the left and mash triangle. He'll get off on the right. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is it? All right, this fight's very fun. Yes, I don't want him running off. All right, we do a checkpoint here when the encounter begins. It's not based on Joel, it's based on elapsed time. So there we go. It places Joel a little further and it guarantees the same positioning for enemies. Okay, I'll make a file here just in case. And here we go. That right there is oh, nice. That right there is why I kind of went with the machete. If because most of the time you're not going to kill all of them with those two two guns, three bullets combined, and those there were two that survived there. I would have had to take them out with the pipe, which probably would have been a relatively quick process because the one on the left was one hit away from dying, and then I would have had to do like two sprint swings on this one. But it just it complicates things less because once a machete animation has started and you hit them you can't get hurt and the machete has three hits in it it's you're either gonna deal as long as you do that strategy the way i did it you're gonna end up with one or two remaining runners so yeah again the pipe may actually be a little bit faster but the machete is just more of a guarantee Because you saw some of those, some of these animations are just a little bit slow, but it's more of a guarantee that uh, you can escape this without any big problems. Because with the pipe, you know, you can deal with the shotgun glitch. Because that's something I didn't mention. Um, the shotgun glitch, where you like try and do a sprint swing, try and do a sprint swing, 
and then he just like runs into the enemy and doesn't do anything. That also applies to the shorty. It's basically the shotgun glitch because uh, uh, this was described to me. Um, the game recognizes the shorty and the shotgun as one hit kills even on clickers, which is correct, but it also applies that logic to the melee weapon without it actually being true. So the game thinks it's going in for a kill, but then when it recognizes it doesn't, then just nothing happens. So yeah, that's only with the shorty and the shotgun where the melee weapons are, or yeah, where the melee weapon sprint swings and even just the normal swings are all glitched out. Um, but yeah, so what you do is you start with the shotgun. The shorty, the shorty is better than the shotgun, if you can believe it. It's more powerful, and the spread is a lot bigger. So we do that, and then one, two. The stairs can sometimes mess it up. And then you just go for these kills. Um, I don't recommend using more than one shotgun shell here. There's no point. But I'll do this a couple more times, and then I'll show what happens. Like, let's say, sometimes you're going to encounter... You're going to do a run where you won't have any shotgun ammo. Oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's really nice. <laughs> and again, it can be performed, like, somewhat equally with the, with the pipe. But again, the machete is just a little bit more of a guarantee. You go shotgun first, then shorty, because the shorty's actually better. Okay, if you're wondering why the swings aren't registering, it's these two little stairs right here. <laughs> it's those two little fucking stairs right there. That's why sometimes the swings are missing. Uh, because, say it, say it with me now, this is the greatest video game ever made. So yeah, machete is a little more guaranteed. Okay, so what do you do if you don't have any shotgun ammo? Because I can tell you right now, this isn't going to work very well. It, it, it doesn't work well. So you need to change up the entire strategy if you only have shorty ammo. And from what I found, this is what you want, want to do. All right, that was a good showing. And if you have a pipe, it also works. You do two sprinting swings on that runner to kill it and then turn around and shorty the rest of them. So again, this works the same whether you have a pipe or a machete. You run up, bait these guys, sprint swing at this one or kill them if you have a machete. One, two. That should have killed this one, but it didn't. Is what it is. And then, pfft, that's funny. And then you go. I'll do it one more time. You know, I'll just do both of them. Okay, so if you have a shotgun, then shorty. One. Boom. Boom. All right, that was bad. If you notice, that one in the back is like running away. I don't know why that's happening. I'm not saying one's better than the other. This one's still faster. Boom. Boom. And then you go ignore the ammo that they drop, and then you go right for the generator. You don't have to do a restart checkpoint here. Only do that if you're really far away. But, uh, yeah. And if you only have shorty ammo, and you weren't blessed with any shotgun drops, do this. I don't know why the one in the back died, but this one didn't. It just, it is what it is. This area is weird. But all right, I'll do the normal strategy and then move on. Oh God, that was terrible. God, that was horrible. Sometimes like 
you'll shoot one right in front of you, but the one in the back will die. The shorty is by far the weirdest gun in this game. Okay, three lived. I, I really... I'm not showing off this strategy to the best of my ability, but basically, boom. A little bit better. And that's the reason right there sometimes I would recommend the pipe over the machete because uh, the animations take a little longer versus some sprint swings. But you can't go wrong with either. That's down to preference. Maybe you had a bad experience or something. All right, whatever they drop, pick up. And do it with the gun swapping thing. Which is typically either, it's gonna be shotgun ammo and revolver ammo. And reload the shorty. Hey, I was thinking. Now, even though we don't use revolver ammo, yeah, they'll only drop shotgun and revolver ammo. Now, even though we don't use revolver ammo anywhere in science lab, we still use it in winter. And as long as it's reloaded when Joel's leaving the science lab after he's impaled, he'll wake up with a fully loaded revolver. But any ammo he picks up here gets added onto that for some reason. So normally he wakes up with six. Whatever ammo he had before, and I don't think it has to be reloaded either. That's still kind of an unknown. I have a theory that any ammo that he has in his backpack but isn't in his revolver when you begin winter just kind of gets added onto the total. But if it was reloaded, then it... Because uh, there's a difference between bullets that are in your gun versus that are in your backpack. Like, if you have seven bullets, six are in your gun, one, one is in your backpack, you know? But the same thing with unreloaded ammo. Say you have one bullet, but you have to reload it. You have one bullet in your backpack. I think the amount of ammo you have in your backpack, combined with the fully loaded revolver you get when Joel wakes up, that's how much extra ammo you have, which can be important. It's not a big deal, because we end up only using five or six bullets. You don't really have time to reload when we use the revolver in the spot where we need it. But yeah, something to keep in mind. Basically, pick up any bullet they drop, whether it's shotgun or revolver. You might find a use for it later. We do use one shotgun shell in the science lab. And again, it's very likely that all of these infected are going to drop one of each, at least one of each. So just, just pick them up. Okay, there's a checkpoint right here. The moment the gate starts to go up, restart checkpoint. Places you right here on the horse. Kind of the same thing as the original. Well, when I was a kid, I used to want to be. This is as fast as you can go. Okay. Shut up. No serious. Sing something. No. Okay, there's also a checkpoint right here. I don't think so. Right. Let me check. 3024 should be right there. Yeah, right there. And what it does is, if you notice right here, Please. we can't move because, oh look, monkeys, short attention span. If you restart checkpoint, you can move right away again. So you want to do that restart checkpoint for that reason. And then you just want to go over here. You got a long stretch here, so you want to get the horse max speed here. And go. Now, what you want to do here is point the camera left and be to the left of this curb. And if you do both, Joel will get off the horse right where you need him to be. If you're the on the curb or the camera's facing the wrong way, he'll get off on the left side. Watch yourself. And then use this time to make sure all your guns are reloaded. They are, okay. And honestly, it's okay if you have zero or one here. It's perfectly fine. That health? Hmm. How about that? I didn't know that was there. You don't need it though. Damn it, spores. All right, the sneaking section. If you approach this, you don't need to hop down, but if you approach it from right here, the encounter can begin like right away. See that? We're up here, but the encounter can technically begin. So, all right, here we go. Ha! <laughs> 
That looks fun enough, right? Okay, first things first, you wanna crouch walk very slowly, because if you crouch walk at full speed, yeah, that. So, crouch walk, slowly. Now you get the bottle. Now every clicker here and the bloater has to be alerted to the bottle. But if you throw it against the wall or something, that one and the bloater won't know it's there. The way they know it's there is by either hitting the floor or hitting like this, sh this uh, table right here. I like to throw it, not on top, but like somewhere down there. Notice how everybody knows it's there. And then, unlike the original, you don't die from the bloater by running into it. You have to wait for him to throw a punch. So you can safely run past him, okay? So yes, crouch walk to this. Throw this right around there. They all have to be alerted by it. And again, you don't want to crouch walk at full speed because otherwise they hear it. You also don't want to sprint away too early. Because... Well, this might work actually, but... Well, let's see if this works. Aha, uh -huh. see, that was my point. You don't want to leave too early. That that technically worked, but the reason it's a lot like it worked a lot cleaner the first time is because when you distract all the infected, the clickers go over and then the bloater. What happens is you gain enough distance from the bloater that he doesn't like go to punch you. He goes to throw some of his crap at you, <laughs> whatever it's called. So what ends up happening is the clickers are so far away, the, bl the bloater basically blocks the clickers. If the clickers get in front of the bloater, they move very, very quickly. Oh! Looks like he didn't make it through. How about that? Yeah, further proof. You want to make sure the clickers are far away. And they won't be far away if you leave too early. Boom. They all got alerted by it. So be generous with this. So, that's good. So as you'll see, the bloater's the one leading the charge and he's blocking the clickers because he's so fat. <laughs> yes, I'm fat shaming a bloater. Uh, <laughs> he's so wide that he's literally blocking the clickers from them moving at their fullest speed. Their fastest speed. Um, what else to mention? When you run past the bloater, you got to make sure it's clean because otherwise... Okay. It's okay if they do their little chirp. All right, they, they heard that. Anyway, you have to make sure... Will this work? No, it won't work. See that? The reason that won't work, the reason that won't work is because I didn't run past him cleanly enough. So he never went to throw his stuff at me. He only throws the stuff at you when you're far away from him. He won't do like the charge because, well, because. <laughs> but because I was close to him when he like, after the alert was triggered, he, all he did was walk towards me. So, I know this sounds like a lot, but this strat is consistent. All that needs to happen is they're all alerted by the bottle throw. But then, basically you need to put some distance between yourself and the bloater, and he'll default to the throwing his stuff at you. And as long as you were fast enough, the bloater should be blocking the clicker. See how important see how how uh, important that is. So basically, there's a timing for it. You need the clickers to move far enough away, and you also need to run 
past the bloater so that you put some distance between them very quickly. And I'll do this a couple more times. Be all sneaky here. Oh god, I that 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 right there is why I shoulder swap when I throw it. And again, I like to throw it at that table. Seems to work for me. The floor will also work. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Throwing it at the wall does not, like I showed off before. But throwing it on the floor should work. Yeah, that'll work as well. But I like throwing it at that table. Not on the table, but like right around there. Works all the same. Make sure the throw is low, though. All right, and then... And as long as the clickers don't surpass him, we're good. So yes, it is very consistent, but there are a lot of layers to it. A lot of specifics to it. All right, we're through this. The next encounter is the science lab fight. Oh, and make sure you keep sprint held down the whole way. If you let go of sprint at all, he'll lose his sprint speed, but if you keep it held down the whole way, he'll sprint all the way out here. It's kind of the strat I mentioned in the downtown building when picking up your first crafting ingredients and even when you're getting boosted up onto the bleachers in the gym in the Bills High School. Right here, you want to place this right around here. It can be awkward setting this up, but just keep trying. <laughs> Let's try the gate. You did it. Yeah. Okay. Science lab fight, I would say, is uh, quite a bit easier in this version. It's still difficult, but compared to the original, I'd say it's a little easier. Okay, weird checkpoint right here. It's like when you get to the edge of that barrel. 37, 28. Right around there? Yeah, right around there. Restart checkpoint. It places you quite a bit further. You don't have to worry. There's a lot of stuff in your way. You don't have to worry about getting full speed here. Um, all right. Point the camera this way so Joel gets off on the left side. And then... Get on the dumpster. Ellie will move Callus so he's not in your way. And then drag the dumpster this way. Doesn't matter the angle, just keep it parallel to the car. And just move this over here. Make sure it's close enough to the truck, otherwise, you just jump into it instead of climbing. Can't climb this fast. And then just turn and climb this. All right, we're inside. Come okay. On, Give me your hand. So, that nail bomb we crafted, we are going to use it here before any enemies show up. Let's look around. I'm gonna update the save file right here. All right, we are going to use this nail bomb before any enemies show up. Right there. Fireflies. I recommend placing it there, kind of not here. somewhere further up here. Anyone? Literally just Keep right about there. What's going on. Now, when we skip a cutscene later, it's not going to despawn any bombs we placed here. I don't remember if the original did that. I think it did, because those cutscenes weren't seamless, so it probably despawned everything. But, I'll have to check someday. But, uh, yeah, right here, after the cutscene, that will stay. And we want that there. 
because a bunch of enemies are going to be blown up by it the moment they spawn in. We ain't alone. And we just continue onward. I like going this way because I need to pick up a brick. I do it via the gun swapping method so he doesn't have to crouch. All right, uh, I'm going to do this again because Ellie isn't normally ahead of me. And when Ellie isn't ahead of you, the you don't have to uh, get distracted by the monkeys that are behind you. So you pretty much just do this. You gotta remember, drop it early. You don't want to drop it like here. So as long as you keep moving, Ellie will never get in front of you here. Nice. And if that happens, you're never distracted by the monkeys. We found out where they went. And you just keep going. That wasn't possible in the original. Uh, now you need that brick. It's absolutely necessary. At least it ain't clickers. Now you can't crouch here or do anything. You can't even like go faster via zoomed in or anything. Well, maybe in all that research. But just keep holding down sprint. And he'll sprint after Ellie's done saying monkeys. Now there's crafting. There's a lot of crafting ingredients in this drawer, but we don't need them. However, if you are a beginner, there's some pretty good stuff in here. Three quarters, half, and half. There's some good stuff in there. That's only if you're doing your own route, though. All right, and again, before you get in here, make sure all your guns are reloaded and stuff. All right, now while this is a cutscene, this is a cutscene that is faster to watch through based on when the timer starts up again. I have a whole other video on that, but I'm just gonna watch it through just to uh, show the movement. You wanna sprint backwards and then also turning the camera to the right. Now this fight is, uh, it's a weird one. You know where that is? I know the city. Is it far? It ain't close. I mean, horseback. There. What? So when you gain control of Joel here. Fireflies? Get down! Oh. Sprint backwards and turn the camera to the right and then go. Okay, now the encounter officially begins when you hit the edge of this table. So right there. See that? Checkpoint became checkpoint and encounter. And we still have the nail bomb placed on the ground, so I'll try and do this perfectly. If this goes perfectly, all we end up using is that nail bomb we placed, but uh, the brick, a couple bricks, two shorty shells, actually. There, there's a couple different things you can do, and I'll show you. Ellie, run! And then triangle on the door. And that's the fight. Now, an alternative strategy you could do is this. It's actually the one I recommend because, well, I'll explain later, but an alternative strategy you could do is this. Okay, sorry. The shorty is supposed to kill both of them. So the main difference between those two strategies I did was um, I used a brick on the guy with the ax on the stairs versus killing him with a shotgun. The reason I would do one or the other is I highly, highly prefer having a brick for the last part of winter as Joel because a shotgun doesn't really help us there but a brick does.
because we use a bunch of revolver ammo. We don't really have time to swap to the shotgun, but a brick can really help with like distracting an enemy that doesn't have to be killed. So if you have a shotgun shell, I highly, highly recommend using it on the guy on the stairs, as long as he's in that spot. Okay. First things first, we don't want to kill this enemy because that would actually spawn in a second enemy. Let me show you. Hey, look, where'd he come from? Yeah, that can just happen, okay? And then, yeah. So this first guy, he doesn't die, okay? We brick him. Now, the reason we have to crouch and pick up the second brick is because, watch this. Stay on my ass. Did you see how, he missed, but did you see how much more aggressive they were? So if you do the gun swapping brick pickup thing, let's pretend he got shot there, okay? It's that versus. Okay. Stick with me. It's that versus. Of course it would have. Okay, hold on. You know what? Pfft. Of course that would. It's because I brushed against this guy. Stick with Basically, me. if you do the gun swapping thing, they know you're there right away. And then good luck making it through. That's what I was trying to show off. You see it. If you do the gun swapping brick pickup, they know you're there the moment you round the corner. But if you have to pick up the brick normally, they don't know you're there until you're through the through the door. So when you pick up that brick, you want it to be you uh, want it to be normally, where he crouches down. All right, now, sometimes there's an enemy with a shotgun here. I don't know why. I could be trying to get this for like 10 straight minutes. He won't be here. But every now and then, there's a random enemy with a shotgun. Not here, but like right there. So, the way I avoid having to deal with him is... Move. Oh, come on. That doesn't normally happen. Jog right here. And then when you start your sprint right here... If you notice, I was re-alerted. That time spent jogging in that little outside area, they lost sight of me. Hurry. There we go. So if I were to sprint like right here, the area can kind of work the same. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, they both have to die there. If the shorty guy lives through your shorty shot, you don't have time to fire a second time, so you would just have to mash square to use whatever melee weapon you have on him. But, uh, yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is there's some inconsistencies that happen when you uh, sprint Ellie, too early. There we go. So right through the doorway I let go, and then I start up again right here. That eliminates the shotgun guy ruining me, and also, there we go. Yeah. Ellie, a little help. Yeah, if there's an enemy alive in the area, the triangle prompt won't work on the door. It can work if you mash it heading into it, but yeah, these enemies have to be killed. And what else to mention? 
I'm showing a lot of weird attempts. Let me just do one normal science lab. This area is not as complicated as I'm making it out to be. Basically, you just do this. Get your shotgun ready. If you do all that, the axe guy should be on the stairs. And then... Oh, got him. And then triangle on the door. That's pretty much it. Um, again, if one of the enemies from your first short shorty sh shell used doesn't kill one of them, don't try and fire another. Instead, let go of aim and mash square. All right. The other reason I wait so long to begin sprinting... Right here. Because I know, looking at it... Um, This part right here probably looks slow. The reason I do this is because... Right here. That's more like it. That was a good one. Um, if Joel has tired sprint... Maybe I can show some stuff off. If Joel has tired sprint... The enemies spawn in down here when you hit that part of the railing of the stairs, like the flat part, right around that part right there. And if Joel has tired sprint when they spawn in, you won't have time to line yourself up with the, uh, to get the collaterals with the shorty. Allie, get away from them. They can also be kind of weird if you like sprint this far and then slow down a little bit. See that they never lost sight of us. So Yeah, again. If you don't have the sprint speed that you need, that collateral shorty shot becomes a little eh. So that's the reason we slow down a lot in that outside part. Okay, so brick this guy. Pick up this brick normally. That'll make it so this alert happens later. You can make it through the door without getting shot. When you're through the door, jog. Get your shotgun out or a brick. Use that there, and then line up this collateral. And it's okay to use all the shorty ammo that you have left, which should be two. And the shorty is actually kind of ridiculous. I'll do all that again. Get out of there. And again, with this enemy on the stairs... Jogging here and then sprinting at the last second not only makes it so they have to, like, rediscover where you are, but it also consistently puts the axe guy there. If you do anything besides this, the guy with the axe can be in a bunch of different places. Bottom floor, already on the top floor, rushing with the guys I use the shorty on. It's very weird. I've noticed doing this strategy specifically consistently makes it so the guy with the axe is on the stairs ready for you to die. Ready for him to die, I mean. <laughs> and the enemies don't spawn in on the bottom until you make it like halfway between the two sets of stairs. So yeah. Also, again, randomly, sometimes there's a shotgun just on the other side of this wall to Joel's right. Um, and you want the sprint speed for the collateral. I'm trying to... Yeah, let's show... Uh, the guy on the stairs who has the axe. You can either use a brick or you can use a shotgun shell. Again, I highly recommend using a shotgun shell if you have it. I really recommend it. Oh. Okay. I guess we're doing that. The collateral didn't seem to get him. Um, yeah, I want to show off the shorty's power. If I'm able to do the bottom right. Normally that shorty collateral is a lot cleaner than what I'm showing. Ow! That's not a thing. Stop 
making this strategy look bad, please. Ellie, go, go. There we go. Once we're through, gentle, quiet, go. Boom. Then. Right there. See how strong the shorty is? It's really strong. But when you're here, I recommend like getting one and then getting the other and then going. That way you're always moving. And that's pretty much it. If the collateral doesn't work, again, just mash square. Through. Start up. Literally perfect. I'll go on that one. All right, here, it's faster to not mash square. Strange, I know, but it's faster. All right, now this is actually a cutscene, but this is one of those cutscenes it's faster to watch all the way through by about a second. Again, it, it's based on when the end game timer starts up again. Well, what do you want me to do? What? Uh, hold on. I actually wanted to make a file here. Okay, so kind of the same logic as the original with these guys. I'm sorry, give me one second. I want to see where this uh, file is going to place me. Okay. So with this guy. Right there, did you see that? If you shoot him too early... Nothing happens. So the guy on the right has to die. But if you shoot him too early, nothing happens. So you have to just wait a little bit, and then... Boom. Now, if you do nothing, the guy on the left will get killed as well. But... If you shoot him yourself, Joel will fall back down earlier. And you have infinite revolver ammo here, so... Yeah, so the strat is boom, boom, oh, man. and that's that. Joel? Oh. I'm gonna need you to pull. Okay. Alright, you ready? One, two, three. Alright, first thing you want to do here is reload your re your revolver. Make sure it's reloaded. Now it doesn't help here, but from what I found, aiming and walking forward is actually faster. Joel, how are we doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Can you handle the window? Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Come on, move. Now, with regards to this guy dying, Ellie will take him out on her own, but it's faster if you help her. All right. Now, you can be sort of penalized for taking too long. No, no, for, I'm sorry. You can be penalized for killing him too early. Like, if you time it perfectly and hit him as early as you can, it, uh, it doesn't end as early as it can. What you want to do is wait for him to fight, for him to get shot, then aim and then uh, then shoot him as early as you can. There's like a cue for it. The aiming here is awkward. You're gonna aim and it'll place it in one spot and then you need to drag it over. Those were my friends. But wait until he gets shot once, aim on and then drag you it over and fire. Away. And then after you shoot him, keep aim held down because if you let go, the animation that Joel has takes longer than if you kept it held down. It's only for like a second. It, it works the same way as the original, so. 
Just like that. That's perfect. If you kill him any earlier, the game, like, doesn't count it. And then Ellie has to kill him. It's kind of weird. And again, once again, this is important. Reload your revolver. If you didn't reload at all, you'd probably have, like, three bullets here by now. Um... Basically, the revolver being reloaded, like so, is what makes Joel wake up with a fully loaded revolver Hurry. Uh, when he wakes up in winter. And again, I think aiming and moving is faster. You're doing good. Just keep at it. Just even sprint doesn't do anything. That's just me. Here, lean on me. No. Well, can you walk? Yes. Then fucking walk! Yeah, we haven't actually compared it, but visually this just looks faster. You want this angled a little bit towards the right. There's the exit. <laughs> just a little bit more, come on. And then let go a little bit. Okay, and now aim right away. Joel! What? You. Ellie. No. If you don't aim right away, that's a lot more dragged out. It's like, behind you. What? Ellie. And then he falls over like three seconds later. So you want to aim as early as you can right there. He's got a gun. Which is pretty much just keep L1 held down the entire time. And that's pretty much everything. We just got to make our way outside. You can't really aim them here. They're on like a they're on like a rails path here. And then cutscene skip. Cutscene skip. And we're in winter. And that is damn, damn fight, ranch, university, science lab. All in one video. I'm tired. <laughs> Hope you learned something. Hope you realize some areas aren't as bad as you might think. I've Again, Science Lab, I think, is a little bit easier this time around. Some things can happen, but yeah. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.